Welcome to PC Replay Baseball's Game of the Week. This is King Ikibu with Tiny Archibald coming to you live from Wrigley Field in Chicago, where the Chicago White Sox of 2005 visit the 2005 Chicago Cubs. Yes, this is the year the Chicago White Sox were world champions. And this is interleague play where they visit Wrigley Field, where it's always exciting when these two teams get together. Here's the lineup for today. For the White Sox, leading off and playing left field, Scott Podsednik. Batting second and playing second base, Willie Harris. Batting third and playing center field, Aaron Rowland. Batting fourth and playing first base, Paul Konerko. Batting fifth and catching the lovable A.J. Pierzynski. Batting sixth and playing right field, Carl Everett. Batting seventh, the shortstop, Juan Uribe. Batting eighth, the third baseman, Joe Creedy. And the starting pitcher, batting ninth, Jose Contreras. The lineup for the Cubs. Leading off and playing second base, Jerry Harrison. Batting second and playing center field, Corey Patterson. Batting third, the first baseman, Derek Lee. Batting fourth in right field, Jeremy Burnitz. Batting fifth at third base, Uramis Ramirez. Batting sixth, the shortstop, Nafi Perez. Batting seventh in left field, Jason Dubois. Batting eighth and behind the plate, Mr. Hank White, Henry Blanco. And batting ninth, the pitcher, Carlos Zambrano. This is the second game of the series. The first game was won by the Cubs. And we'll talk about that game a little bit later, but let's get this one underway. That is a fitting rendition of the National Anthem when you consider two teams from Chicago. Here is the pitching matchup. Jose Contreras, he has a record of 6-2 and two with a 273 ERA. You could argue that he is the ace of the staff. And for the Cubs, definitely the ace, Carlos Sombrano. He's 5-3 and three with a 235 ERA. Both pitchers off to great starts. You can see that the White Sox and the Cubs have very almost similar records. The White Sox are in second place in the American League Central with a 23 and 19 record. The Cubs are in third place in the National League Central with a 21 and 18 record. The Cubs have had a very unusual start. They were uh, tied for first place with the Cardinals early in the season and then they went on a nine game losing streak. They just pulled out of the losing streak, and they've won their last four games. So a very inconsistent and streaky team. So let's get this ball game underway. Replay Radio is live from Chicago. Top of the first. 
Wonderful shot from our overhead cam of Wrigleyville and beautiful Wrigley Field. This was from earlier today when the uh, stands were just uh, starting to fill, but now they are completely full, as you can imagine, in this very interesting interleague series. There's a current shot. So Zambrano is ready to lead off to Podsednik. And let's get this one underway. So a leadoff walk for Podsednik. And he has to steal. He has a line K. Which no outs, man on first. Is good news for the defense. Here we go. Unless he rolls a 7 or a 10 or 12, he is going to be... Oh, look at that. Gets the 10 and he has a wild pitch. So the White Sox are catching the brakes early. No outs, man on second. Here's Willie Harris batting 231 in 39 at-bats. Uh, we'll bring the corners in. And strikes out. One down here in the first inning. One out, man on second. We'll talk about yesterday's game. It was an interesting game. It was won by the Cubs 2-1. to one. Very close ball game. They won it in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, let's see if I can remember how that happened. Mm, I don't think I do play-by-play -play from yesterday. but it, it was an exciting ball game. You'll have to take my word for it. Here's Aaron Woland. He's batting 242, three home runs, 19 RBIs. The center fielder, one of the best defensive center fielders of the decade. And he's on with a walk. Second walk given up by Zambrano. One out, men on first and second. And here is the main power source of the White Sox, Paul Konerko. The face of the franchise. He's ha he has 11 home runs and 30 RBIs already this season. Pitch very carefully. Okay, we got a rare play possibility. Let's see what this roll is. Okay, so we have a rare play. Let's see what it is. Single to right field. Here comes Pitsegnik. He scores. There's a play on third, and we have to roll higher than a four to get him out. And he is safe. Kernico's going for extra base. We roll against his speed. Should be much of a challenge as long as we roll higher than the run. We did, and he is out. The run scores. Rowland at third and two way. Two outs, men on third. Here's Pierzynski. He has six home runs, 16 RBIs, batting 274. And he flies out. So that's it for the White Sox one in the run, first. One hit and one left on. Bottom of the first. Here's Contreras to face Jerry Harrison to lead it off. He's batting 233. Gets a 6-6. Six, six. Too bad it wasn't a home run hitter. For Harrison, it's just a single. No outs, men on first. Here's Corey Patterson. Interesting year for Corey Patterson. He is a very poor hitter. As you can see in real life, he batted 215. And yet he's doing much better in the replay. He has eight home runs and 16 RBIs. Most of them came in the first couple weeks of the season. He is there just uh, basically to bunt, and that's what he's going to be doing right now. He's going to lay down a bunt. Too bad we didn't bunt to one of the corner guys, but here's Pierzynski. He's going to make the play, and he does his job. He gets him over to second base for Derek Lee. This was... One out, man on second. This was Derek Lee's career year. 46 home runs in 2005, batting 335. If you remember the next year, he had that injury for most of the year. But this was his great year, and he's definitely playing that way in this replay. He's batting 363 with nine home runs and 33 RBIs. Let's hope he does not hit into a 3-6. Something better than that. Three, two, and that is only if he rolls a six will we get a base hit. You think Wrigley Field is an extreme hitter's park, but it uh, doesn't always work that way. 
for the short flies in column three. And we don't get the roll, so he is out to Pudsednik. And there's two away. Two outs, man on second. There's Jeremy Burnitz. He also has nine home runs and 27 RBIs, batting 295. Oh, hit the right column, but just a loud fly out to end the inning. No runs, one hit, and one left on. Top of the second. There's Carl Everett, the switch hitter, batting 276. And he hit the good one there. He's got a base hit to center field. Everett is on. The leadoff hitter is on for the White Sox for the second straight inning. No outs, man on first. Here's Uribe. And he is a very underrated player if you watch the playoffs. Here in 2013, uh, he was a huge factor in the playoffs, and uh, he's really been an underrated player all these years. He was great in 2005 for the White Sox. Corners are in, possibility of a bunt, but no bunt here. Nafi gets the ball to him as a possible double play. And let's see what we have to do to get a double play here. Have to roll higher. No. Have to roll three or less, I believe. Hey! Yep. Got it right that time. So we don't get the double play. One out, man on first. And just one out. Here's Joe Creedy, batting 270, two home runs, 15 RBIs. And because of the platoon, that is not a good one for them. And a leaping catch by Perez. There's two away. Two outs, men on first. Here's Contreras, only had three at bats in 2005. And he is out here, so that ends the threat for the White Sox in the second. No runs, one hit, and one left on. Bottom of the second. Here's Ramirez. He's batting 291, eight home runs, 30 RBIs. Cubs are scoring a lot of runs here early in this season, mostly because of their three, four, five hitters. The key for this team is getting people on base in front of Lee. That's an easy out to Willie Harris. One away. One out, base is empty. Here's Nafi Perez. The Cubs started 2005 with a shortstop and second base combination of Nomar Garcia Para and Walker. And uh, they're both fours. So um, Nafi Perez has been much maligned by Cub fans, but this was a decent year for him defensively and not bad offensively. He got worse as time went on. And, uh, but let's enjoy his good season while it lasts. He gets nothing here. The little dribbler to the first baseman, Kernerko. Easy play, two away. Two outs, base is empty. And Jason Dubois. Not much to say about him. He got hit a good number, but Contreras nullified the double. An and easy inning it. to score. One, two, three. Top of the third. So still one to nothing here in the third inning. But Sednik, Harris, and Rowand do up for the Sox. is not going to be anything because of Zambrano. Nullified any possibility of a hit there. Fly out to center field, one away. First time the Sox did not get up, get their leadoff hitter on. Base is empty. Here's Harris. He struck out in the first inning and he strikes out again. Two outs, base is empty. There's Rowland, he walked in the first. And he almost walked again, but not quite. So the inning's over. And just like that, the inning's over. Bottom of the third. There's Blanco, he is starting for the second consecutive game. There must be something wrong with uh, oh. Michael Barrett. Yes, I have a poor memory. One away from a hit. <coughs> Excuse me. 
One out, base is empty. Here's Zambrano. He had an excellent year at the plate. And you can see that's being confirmed by his 346 average so far, though he doesn't have any power or RBIs so far, but you can be certain that is to happen sometime this season. But he strikes out this time. Back three, you're out. One away for Harrison. Two outs, base is empty. Or two away for Harrison. And he's an easy out. So Contreras is Back mowing three, them down out. here. In the first three innings. It's a one, two, three inning. Top of the fourth. The White Sox are still leading one to nothing. Here's Canerco singled in the run in the first inning. And he has another possibility here. You have to roll a one or two to prevent a hit. As Dubois is just an average fielder. But we get it. One out, base is empty. Here's Pierzynski. He's going to be an easy out. A little easy play to Ramirez. Two away. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Everett. And he strikes out. Easy inning for Zambrano, who's settling down here after giving up that first inning run. It's a 1 2 3 inning. Bottom of the fourth. The way Contreras is pitching, it looks like a very huge run at this point. It's a wrong column for Patterson. Fly out to center field, one away. One out, base is empty. Nobody on base for Derek Lee. He himself gets on base. Base on balls and a possibility for a stolen base. One out, man on first. Krasinski's a below average catcher arm-wise, and Contreras doesn't hold runners on very well, so we have a good chance here of stealing higher than 26. Oh, roll the 22. One out, man on first. There's Jeremy Burnitz. Let's hope he doesn't hit into that double play. Something in the sixth column would be good. Okay, it's a possibility for an error, but Aribe is an outstanding fielder. So I do. Do not take it for granted here. 52, 13, and Lee is out at second base. Burnett's safe at first. Two outs, men on first. Here's Ramirez, two outs, and he strikes out. Track three, you're out. So Contreras pitches out of a no small runs, jam. No runs, no hits, and one left on. Top of the fifth. Here's your rebay. Strikes out. One out, base is empty. It's a fourth K for Zambrano. Here's Creedy. And he walks. Ball four. Take the race. That is Zambrano's Achilles heel, the base on balls. One out, man on first. Well, there might be a possibility of a bunt here. Nope. Pitcher to first, but Creedy advances on the play, putting him in scoring position. Two outs, man on second. For Pitsednik. So Zambrano's got to be careful here. Oh, he is not. 6-6, six, six, single. Creedy will probably score, I imagine. Yep. Two to nothing, White Sox. Fans are not pleased. We have a possibility of a stolen base. Two outs, men on first. Though Zambrano holds runners on very well. Blanco is a good catcher. Let's see. Nope, no stolen base there. Two outs, men on first. Here's Harris. He struck out twice. And he's out. A dribbler to the pitcher. But the damage is done. It's two to nothing. One run, one hit, and one left on. Bottom of the fifth. Oh, will Contreras blink? Here's Nafi. Oh, close, but nothing. One away. One out, base is empty. Here's Jason Dubois. Lined out of the column, but bad number in the middle. Got a good roll on the pitcher's card, too. Could have been out of here. Two outs, base is empty. Blanco. Out on a little pop out, 
to, to second base. And that's it for the Cubs. They are to score. One, two, three. not doing anything here today. Top of the sixth. Perez makes the play. See, if that was a uh, Garcia Parr with his four, there would have been a possibility of an infield hit, but if he's a better fielder, no infield hit. One out, base is empty. Canerco. But again, Nafi saves a day there. So don't diss Nafi. Two outs, base is empty. Kurzinski, 0 for 2, and he strikes out. Oh, after five and a half, it's, it's two to one, nothing, two, White Sox. Bottom of the sixth. Here's Zambrano. Let's see if he can get something going here for his own cause. Oh, one away from a double. If this would have been a six instead of a five, he would be on second base. One out, base is empty. Hairston. And he hits a good column, but he is out, nullified by Contreras. He's pitching a gem here. Two outs, base is empty. Patterson. Okay, he's got good speed, so let's hope for a even number here in the purple square, but we get a odd. Let's see what can happen here. Texas pop fly to shallow center, where Rowan is a five, and easily makes They go down quietly, nothing doing this half inning. Top of the seventh. So we're going to the seventh here. It's two to nothing. Everett is out. Line out to Lee. One away in the seventh. One out. Base is empty. Uribe. He's out. Possibly a strikeout. Got it. I think they, on the 17, on the two, they throw a dice internally. And if it's odd, it's a strikeout. If not, it's a flyout. So, Sombrano got a K. Two outs. Base is empty. That's number six for him. Here's Creedy. There's a possibility of a hit. This time it's to Burnitz, who's a better fielder. You have to roll a five or six to get a hit. And we got a three. He is out. Still two to nothing. An easy inning to score. One, two, three. And we're going to the stretch. Who's singing today? Bottom of the seven. Nobody. Here's, here's Derek Lee. Let's see if he can get something going. I think he did. It's gone. Almost onto Sheffield. No, Waveland. Onto Waveland. There's no Udfield screen. Is there in Wrigley Field? That's his 10th of the year and cuts the lead in half. It's 2-1. to one. No outs. Base is empty. Too bad nobody was on base ahead of him. Here's Burnitz. Let's see if we can have back-to-back -back shots. Oh, close. What a deep fly to left into the well. And he's allowed out. One out, base is empty. Here's Ramirez. And that's an easy play for Creedy, who's that left side of the White Sox infield has incredible defense. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Nafi. He's 0 for 2. 0 for 3. Easy out. But the Cubs get on the board in the 7th, and it's 2 to 1 White Sox. One run, one hit, and none left on. Top of the 8th. Okay, let's see. Contreras has two batters left before he is possibly tired. That's good news for the Cubs the way he's pitching. The manager and they're calls pulling for a pinch hitter. him. Bringing in Timo Perez, so we don't have any more Contreras. But there are a lot of good arms in that White Sox bullpen, so do not celebrate yet. Here's Perez, batting 132, although he gets a hit here. But he has to steal. That's the plus sign. No outs, man on first. Zambrano is tired, just like that. But he's going to stay in for his five hold on this stolen base attempt. And he's gone. One out, base is empty. Okay, so let's bring in a left-hander. Not a great bullpen for the Cubs. 
this uh, this was supposed to can you imagine if Pryor was healthy Wood was healthy and Zambrano what a great uh, pitching staff they would have had for so many years but that's typical Cub fortune and let's see we got Ullman as a left-hander and we got Bartosh Let's bring in Bartosh. And where would he be? Yeah. Just want to have him for two more batters, hopefully. And yes, we'll put three. So it makes all, because of the platoon, you get to pick a column. We take the first row. And that means that no matter what, if he rolls a three, the pitcher rolls a one. So that's the advantage of bringing in, bringing in a relief pitcher in the middle of the inning if you have the platoon advantage. Let's put Sednik. He is one for two, and he gets a speed hit. I think this means uh, he, can steal, he can try for second, which he probably will, because he's an excellent, has excellent speed. Let's hope we get a six. We don't. And I think he can steal third, I think. Is that right? Yes, then he steals third automatically one out man on second we have no hope of throwing them out so but Sednik goes to third it's like a triple one out man on third so instead of uh, yeah this is supposed to happen that way we're bringing the infield in to Willie Harris struck him out that's going to be it for Bartosh. Two outs, men on third. That was a key out. We're not going to press our luck. We are going to bring someone in. Who are we going to bring in? We've got Borowski, former closer. He's not a big home run hitter. So we will bring in Borowski. We're going to get a one here. That's what we want. For one batter. And then we'll put it on a three. So once again, we'll nullify anything on the three. This is his first batter of the year that he's facing for Joe Borowski. He was the closer for the Cubs in that uh, championship season. I mean championship, Central Division Championship of 2003. We all know what happened, and we will not talk about that. Do not mention it in the comments. Bring back old wounds. Okay, Patterson has to roll a one to four to prevent another run. Will he prevent a run? Can't roll a five or six. Oh, he does it. Good play by Patterson to save a run. No runs, two hits. One left on it. Bottom of the eighth. They're making the call of the bullpen. Like every day, it seems like, here is Neil Kotz. He pitches almost every day. He already has 21 innings, and we're in the latter part of May. It's almost certain he's going to come into a ball game. He's going to do a uh, Mike Marshall of 1974, the way it's going. Here's Dubois. Got the platoon advantage, but look at all these asterisks in the two column. Pretty much nullifies everything. And also in the three column and in the home run column, the only thing is the walks. You can roll a five in the red. It's about the only thing that he gives up. See, look, oh, look at that. He got on. I thought I was going to say for sure he's going to nullify it with one of these asterisks, but we got number six, so he's on base. No outs, men on first. The defense is playing in at the corners. Yes, that's the play for Blanco, is the bunt to get the runner into scoring position. He's going to lay down a bunt. OK. The corners in prevented it from being not in, which is a lot better for us. But still did the job. Way to go, Blanco. Dubois is at second base. One out, man on second. Uh, do we bring in a pinch runner? We have Macias, who is a switch hitter. Kind of nice to 
Uh, we got two left-handers here. And can he play left field? He can, not very well. He gives up a lot of errors. Hollinsworth is much better. He's 61 on the errors. Oh, here's a new Cub, Enrique Wilson. It's not very good. Yeah, I think we'll better pinch run. So, Macias comes in to pinch run. Uh, there's no way he's going to hit. Who's going to we'll bring in... Uh, I was going to say, oh, say Marty Barrett. I think of 1986 Red Sox. We're going to bring in Michael Barrett. He's going to pinch hit. Hope for the best. Line drive single. Possibility of an error. I don't think that Simic has too much in the way of errors, but let's see. 54. Got to roll 55 or higher. 23. But the base hit. We'll take it. One out. Men on first and third. They brought the infield in. Infield is in for Harrison. Harrison doesn't hit in any double plays in column one. Uh, column four, I imagine, although the infield's in, so it won't be a double play. These are bad. Uh, doesn't hit a lot of sacrifice flies either. So, yeah, I'm not very hopeful here, but well, we'll see what happens. Strikeout. Three, you're up. Two outs, men on first and third. Ugh, Corey Patterson. Uh, yeah, not much there, but I don't think we have anybody on the bench really, unless we bring in a pitcher. Is there any? If it was Zambrano. We definitely bring him in, but best hitter left is Todd Wilmeyer. I don't think it's worth bringing in, him in, so just hope for the best. Well, strike out. Kotz does the job. No runs, two hits, and two left on. Top of the ninth. Bear doesn't play outfield, does he? I don't think so. Just strictly catcher. So we will bring in a pitcher, and you have Konerko, Pierzynski, and Everett. I know uh, Cubs would, Cub fans would scream at me for this, but Latroy Hawkins. He was a horrible pitcher for the Cubs, but because he went to the Giants, I believe, and pitched well for them. He doesn't have that bad of numbers. So we will bring him in. Confirm. Now, even though we have the platoon advantage, we don't get to pick a column here because it's in the beginning of the inning. It only happens when you bring in someone in the middle of the inning. So far, Hawkins is, has a three ERA, one and zero oh with two saves, and we have a rare play possibility. Let's hope for an even number. No, okay, this is well, this is not as good. This is probably just have another crack at it, which he will because there's no foul territory at Wrigley Field. No outs, base is empty. So we'll try it again. Ooh, close to a hit. But he got him out. One away in the ninth. One out, base is empty. Pierzynski is 0 for 3. Oh, very good possibility of a hit. So oh, not that great. See, Wrigley Field. Pitcher's park here. As, as long as we don't roll a 5 or 6. And we don't. Two away in the ninth. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Everett. And Hawkins, something he would not have done as a Cub, 
Does one, two, three. They go down quietly, nothing doing this half inning. The guy blew ball games when he played pitch for the Cubs. That's Bottom sure. of the ninth. They're bringing in a new pitcher. And here's the closer, Dustin Hermanson, with his five saves. Real life, he had 34. He does have a little bit of a high ERA at 496. Let's hope that that continues. We have the heart of the lineup for the Cubs in the ninth. So here's the Derek Lee, who has the only run. The Cubs, he homered in the seventh. And he walks here. No outs, men on first. Here's the third Burnett's. Is playing in. So the winning run is at plate in the form of Jeremy Burnett's. Let's hope he doesn't hit to a double play. And he did. He did hit into a double play. Four, six, three, double play. Two outs, base is empty. The last hope for the Cubs, Aramis Ramirez. Oh, hit the good column, but a simple fly out, pop out, and that ends the inning. The Cubs lose. Chicago wins a nail biter. Which Chicago? From all of us at Replay Games, thanks for playing. So Contreras goes to seven and two. Zabrano drops to five and four. And the MVP of the game, Jose Contreras. Here's your box score. The White Sox, two runs, five hits, no errors. The Cubs, one run, four hits, and no errors. The winning pitcher, Jose Contreras, seven and two, goes to 258 ERA. And the loser, Zambrano, hard luck loser, five and four, 236 ERA. Well, sorry, Cub fans, I could not bring to you another win. The Cubs. And their four-game winning streak, and the White Sox improved to 24 and 19. We will look at the standings and tell you a little bit of what's happening in this season so far. It's been an interesting 2005. The holders, can you guess who the holders of the best record in baseball so far? Well, I'm sure if you had three guesses, you would not have picked the Toronto Blue Jays, who are two, 29 and 13. They are five games ahead of the Yankees in the American League East. Now, in real life, there were only 80 and 82. Thing, there's dark clouds ahead for Toronto. This is the season that their ace, who is 8 and 0 right now, Roy Halladay, gets injured at the All-Star break and is out for the season. So the Blue Jays have to really build up a huge lead and try to hang on to nullify that devastating loss. But uh, the best record in the National League belongs to the St. Louis Cardinals. It makes sense because they were 100-game winners in 2005, but they lost to the Houston Astros, who were the wild-card winners. And if you remember, they were the ones who got swept by the White Sox in the World Series. But right now, the the White Sox are not even in first place in their division as the Cleveland Indians are. They have the same number of wins, but they have three fewer losses. And it should be a very exciting race right to the wire if things go as planned. Surprising leader of the American League West are the Seattle Mariners, who only won 69 games in real life, but are in first place in the West, although only one game ahead of the Angels. In the National League, we have a tie between the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. Uh, the interesting thing about the Mets, you think, well, yeah, they were a good team that year, and they were, but uh, they were they off to a horrible start. Let's see if we can... At this point, I believe they were four and thirteen. No, four and twelve. They were four and thirteen here, and since then, they have won. They have only lost six games and won nineteen. Nineteen and six. So they're on a hot streak, and that's how they got to a point where they have are in a tie with Atlanta. And in the West, it is a really weak division. 
Although the San Diego Padres are playing very well to start the season. But that is a basic summary of the season so far. And we will probably play this, maybe tomorrow, this New York matchup between Randy Johnson and... Would you rather see Randy Johnson versus Chris Benson? Or would you rather see Carl Pavano versus Pedro Martinez? That's probably the better pitching matchup. So I might wait for that one. Although this one's okay. But you probably want to see Pedro. Everybody wants to see Pedro in his prime. So that's it for the game today. Sorry, Cub fans. A disappointing loss today. Here was the game yesterday. And play-by-play. Uh, -play, play. How do they get that run in the bottom of the ninth? Ramirez singled in Patterson to win the game yesterday. But that did not happen today. So, once again, this is King Ikibu with Tiny Archibald saying so long from Wrigley Field in Chicago where the final score, the White Sox 2 and the Cubs 1. Have a pleasant day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.